Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin, that is Jill, and we just finished up a Hello. very long, detailed conversation. Of, uh, we, we went through the history of, um, we went through the history of like digital downloads and we ended up preparing for a one month power the outage apocalypse. and Mad Max. <laughs> Going yes. down because that's what we do in the pre-show. If you want access to that <laughs> podcast format and video format, join us a uh, patron, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. It'll be there this afternoon. But what do we got going on this week? We got a pretty chunky show, but we're gonna try to get in and out. What have you been up to, Julie? Anything new? Oh boy. So I was excited uh last Friday when we played Trackmania Trackmania 2 Stadium, our um Points match, match stream, I came in third place. I was so proud of myself. <laughs> Excited, too. Yeah, Rob, you almost came in second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woohoo, I'm getting better. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not how the kids play these days, Jill. You, you're supposed to try something. And yeah. If you're not immediately good at it, you quit. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't do that. I keep, keep at it, keep at it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, actually, uh, Thanksgiving is uh, tomorrow here in the United States. So everyone have a great long holiday weekend. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! Track me again. I was like, all right, that's what we got. I think our resident Canadian Jordan's going to be streaming uh, some Borderlands 3 if you want to join in with him. He'll be nice. doing that at 7 30 tomorrow afternoon. Uh, speaking of the Track Mania thing, I set uh, that up. If you're in our ah. Discord, you'll see that. Uh, I, I, we now, if you want, because it was like LinuxGameCast.com, I created a page for a server, you know, just to let people get a taste of it. Like, hey, this is what yeah. you need to do to log in and all that. Now you can get to that page just by typing in filthy.linuxgamecast.com. <laughs> everything you need. The main reason I mean that is so I could put it on the server description on the server browser in game. So people didn't have to type in like linuxgamecast.com forward slash like filthy dash casual and all that. So all of that is put together, but kind of excited. A couple of things that went on since last week. I'm waiting to see what is going to show up in the mail because I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get what I ordered. I posted mm. last week in Discord. I'm like, uh... There's a store on Amazon right now that where you can buy 128 gigabytes of RAM for uh, 39 bucks. So, well, I mean, it's 64 gigs. I bought two, of course. And I'm like, that. there's no way this is going to get canceled. But you got to try it, right? Because you never know. Like, mm -hmm. maybe. Maybe it's yeah. going to show up. Maybe not. And it's been shipped. It's been shipped. Yay, but then. <laughs> I, I don't think that, because I saw Ayrton, um, Ertain, Ertain, I think, ordered uh, the <laughs> same thing, you know, like 64 gigs or 32. Everything was just priced at 39 in the store. Mm. So uh, it, it ended up being like DDR1 or something like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but they issued a refund. So I'm just curious to see, you know, if something's going to show up when you do. I was hoping it was going to show up today, but I guess maybe not. Maybe next week we'll have whatever's in the mystery boxes, but I didn't expect to get anything. And if they're mm. going to refund it, I don't care, whatever. I, you got to try. You got to take that swing every now and then. Yeah, because I, absolutely. I, that my show. But <laughs> not to be deterred and sticking kind of on, um, I am going to be building a thermal nope box. <laughs> Yay. What's not that even intel, kidding. Ben? <laughs> Let me show you, Jill, because I am building. I, I've, we're we're going to start a, a micro ATX, you know, not not like super, super small, but I'm going for, I got to replace, I don't have to, but I'm going to replace one of the three boxes under this desk, which are, you know, the slim business pieces. Yeah. Small form factor. Yeah. Not like mm -hmm. the super crazy little tiny ones, uh, yeah. but, you know, still slim, which I was very, not upset, but I was curious, I was like, no one makes a case in that form factor for an ATX motherboard. And you think maybe they would considering everything has an IGPU these days, right? Yeah. Yeah. That makes no. sense. It's hard to find. <laughs> Mer, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so yeah, this is what I'm going to be building for a couple of reasons. One, I, I'd like to have like, you know, just an AMD system because it turns out 5,600 G can run track mania. I tested it on Jackbox. Mm -hmm. 
1080p 60, no problem, but for other game testing. So I'm going to turn uh, Jordan's box, the box you're on right now, into okay. like a super, super box. But it's still nice. just primarily, primarily it's going to be doing this. It's going to be running, you know, just the Jitsi and basic uh, video back and forth. But it's also going to have the capability to act as a streaming box for cool. games and stuff like that. So you can be in spectator mode. Because I, I, as entertaining as it is to watch me drive around in my little pink track mania car with kittens all over it, I want it to just be able to rotate through everybody. But I also want to yeah. play. <laughs> yeah. You know? So I am yeah. always juggling, like, I'll do a lap and I'll put it on spectator mode so yeah. everybody else gets a turn on the stream in front of the camera. And that's So that way I'll just be able to set it on spectator and we can just go at it. But Nice, Finn. Head over to Linux Teamcast. There's a link to our wish zone so you can judge me for what i've picked i'm going for in win yeah those are good cases yeah. uh, it's in win and then this comes with a power supply too because mm -hmm. you can use one of those dumb little sf um, oh it factor. does okay yeah good. right yeah and i'm like well that comes with the power supply that's good okay i'm sticking i know some people are gonna have a problem with my corsair but you know what i've never had a problem with this corsair oh, vengeance ram corsair is fine and thread ripper i got it in jackbox i've just been using it it's cheap buy one of these if you don't have one for yourself uh the Ryzen 5 5600G is an incredible value. Yeah, and they just recently came way down in price. One hundred twenty dollars right? is really bucks. good. Like, <laughs> why not? And yeah. uh, I'm sticking with MSI for the motherboard because nice. I'm just waiting. And you know, B550. I was thinking about like this ASUS business version, but it had some bad reviews, and it was like ninety eight dollars, so one hundred nineteen bucks. And probably the only expensive thing I'm going to have on this is the uh, Noctua. Mm, low profile yeah. cooler which is like 60 bucks which is more than i would but it, it's got to be quiet because it's in here yeah absolutely yeah mm -hmm. so uh it'll be interesting i think once i get all those parts together i will that's like one of the rare things i don't get a chance to do be able to stream putting that thing together you know, that'll we, be so much fun we then? can just do an yeah. afternoon of yeah. people very very loudly telling me i'm doing something wrong it'll be awesome. yeah that's always gonna happen <laughs> Arr, you need to do it like that you need to do, why do you have mayonnaise out i'm like stay tuned <laughs> that'll, that'll be entertaining that'll be entertaining. something we can do is like just a streaming event so everyone, yeah. I, I like watching people like put together pcs myself i never get a chance to do it because the pcs i'm always working on are the ones like critical to make this mm -hmm. work yeah I'm so. like, ha, ah, boo, I can't figure out a way to do that. So it'll be fun to have that together. And I look forward to uh, having a super hard. And the way I'm justifying this is, hey, this is that's kind of cheap. I thought it was going to be a little more expensive to build a, because I want to do some benchmarks on the 5600G once I have it just together. Yeah. Because uh, it, you know, that's like 500, less than $500 for something that can play some games under Linux too. Yeah, so. absolutely. AAA titles too, just lower settings, but it plays them. We'll have to take yeah. a look. We'll have to take a look. Mm -hmm. One last thing. Uh, last week, we talked about the Pulse browser, mm -hmm. which is like the stripped down version of Firefox, you know, being all sleek, being all nice and sexy. And uh, of course, me being me, Mr. Negative, I think I'm an incredibly <laughs> positive person. A. Uh, yeah. <laughs> however, he didn't like I'm, the sidebar. I, I'm not a cheerleader. <laughs> if I see a problem with something, I'm like, because I value constructive criticism and positive feedback i'm like tell me if something's wrong and i said you know what this is a pretty neat project it's great it's stripped down and um reminds me of uh you know like crumbing stripped down and opened it up and there was that dumb little sidebar <laughs> and, like they have in vivaldi i'm like why yeah. would you ever put that there the developer wrote back and it's like hey bolt stuff sidebar can be disabled via about preferences or you can go to general about preferences, show sidebar tabs. I will look into making it easier to disable as part of the setup. Thanks for the feedback. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> so, yeah. What else? I, I think that's it. Uh, we'll be back playing Trackmania Friday. Friday. Yeah. Did you did you run into any maps? I know. I'm sorry, but you got to deal with this because we play Trackmania on Tuesday and this is our first chance to really <laughs> talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just 
there was just one map that I was embarrassed that I didn't make it through the the two five minute periods. But I I see the goal at the end, and I know, you know how to get at, there. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'll the get there. The most frustrating of all maps. Yeah, right. <laughs> we have a good time with that. Now, let's get in to the show proper because I ran across something earlier this week that oh, it hit me right in the feels. It Sweet. did. Google Plus theme for Mastodon. Oh, Yay! I was like, oh, that, that's <laughs> novel. Um, Chromeunbox.com. All the links will be in the show notes. I was like, oh, that's cute, whatever. And I just really went through a lot. This really messed with my emotion because I had to go check it out. There's a GitHub project, cuckoo.plus. And, uh, you know, Google Plus, third party website client for Mastodon, not a big deal. Like, whatever, I'm not going to do NPM anything, but they had a demo up. So we went from, this is our Mastodon right now. This is mass.linuxemcast.com. It looks mm -hmm. like that. I'm like, okay, I kind of know how to use it and all that. It went from that to looking like this. Sweet. And oh, it gives me nerd chills then. <laughs> it, and, and it works. It works. <laughs> I can... Give that a plus one and it does yeah. things. And <laughs> you can leave comments and oh, I, like it just hit me back. Hi, Frank. <laughs> Frank's always showing up on shows. Um, yeah. <laughs> really threw me sideways because, uh, you know, this was a project that started back in 2019 when they were closing down Google Plus. And that was the year that Google's like, you guys are having way too much fun on the social network, so we need to get rid of them. Like, Google, why would you do that? Like, well, we, we just got to kill it. Reasons? No, nah, not really. Bye. And the developer decided that what makes this so cruel is this is a functioning proof of concept project that has been put together. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not just, you know, lips on a pig stick. It, you can see where this could go. Like, yeah, oh, bring this absolutely. back. Bring this back. I this... don't bring this back. <laughs> and that's the reason I'm bringing it up because it, it, this is kind of a dead project. You know, after I, I looked into it, the, even the yeah. guy who developed it, he's, he's not even on the Fediverse or whatever we're calling the Mastodon this week. I just wanted to get some eyes on it because even Strider saw it. Strider's like, wait a minute. Hmm, maybe I'm going to do something with this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know what? I'll, I'll use Mastodon more if you can make it work like Google Plus did. I don't yeah. understand. And I, <laughs> me too, Ben. What, what are your thoughts on this, Jill? Because I, I don't have, I didn't think, I didn't think I had nostalgia for Google Plus, but I was wrong when I saw this. I'm like, yeah. oh, I remember this. This worked very well. <laughs> Same thing, you know. This is actually now my default Mastodon inter interface, and you know, I. Uh, this is how I found Linux, not how I found Linux Gamecast, but this is how I was originally talking with Ven and Pedro and Jordan back in the day when we were all in Google+. Plus. I love those days, Ven. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but yeah, uh, th there's, you know, this was a work in progress. So one of the things that doesn't work, for instance, is, is when you click on your profile, the default Mastodon page actually comes up instead of the, the Cuckoo Plus interface. Um, but that's... That's not that big a deal. It's it's functional <laughs> as it is, and um, it even has like it, sh it shows you a pop up of the number of notif notifications for new messages on the top page, just like Google Plus. Whenever you get a new message from one of your followers, or if you're um, in in your home feed, or if you're in your public feed on your server, um, or, or I, I'm sorry, your local feed on your server, or or the public Fediverse feed. So it's, it's, and it's so much better organized than Mastodon is. <laughs> and like you said, Van, being able to hit the plus one, like we used to in the Google plus days, just totally gave me nerd chills. <laughs> like I can live with this. <laughs> I want this. I want this. You want yeah. me to use Mastodon more. Uh, that, that's how you do it. Uh, yeah. Or, you know, mm -hmm. just give me a one-to-one -one clone of mm -hmm. Google plus. Somebody bring that up. Bring it back, yeah. make it a thing. And, you know, because uh, Mastodon, the discoverability with Mastodon for me, like that's adding the other. The problem. Yeah. And the search it's isn't that there. great. Yeah, you have to not. know exactly the name. And it's just, 
Yeah, it's hard, especially for new users coming in. <laughs> we, um, I think Stephen Fry last week, Stephen Fry's like, I'm moving to Mastodon, and the post was like, how do I use this thing? Man? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Like, make, make, make me happy. Some, somebody pick this up and like, let's roll yeah. our own. We can make our own Google+. Plus cause, yeah. And, you know, despite what the internet believes, Twitter's not going to bloat either. So, yeah. you know, let, let's make Mastodon get, give it that extra special, like, ooh, give incentive, right? To um, yeah, get absolutely. people to bump over. I you know, know, maybe all those workers that aren't working on at Twitter anymore on their free time, they can work on the Mastodon project and pr improve it. <laughs> oh man, I've seen a lot of. I, I, I've seen a lot of people bounce over to try Mastodon, and for the first time, you know, yeah. mass, like Mastodon account since uh civic set up our mastodon server and like well i guess i need to 2018 2018 yeah. Okay. yeah and um i i uh, i try to use it but you know the, i think the barrier is like finding more people on it you know yeah you have each instance and you get to know like what instances to follow like i i don't have time for that mm -hmm. i don't like, yeah. or or the desire maybe that's it but then again i don't i don't get tiktok either chill <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm not gonna pretend i do and i've had tiktok explained to me by with a teenager on end i'm like yep don't get it don't care yeah so I don't well know. one of the tricks to search on mastodon is using hashtags like use hashtag linux or you know ha ha hashtag lgc or <laughs> anything else you need to look for um you know use the hashtag and then you got like trending and hashtags handy. and stuff like that which yeah requires manual intervention because i get an email it's like this mm -hmm. hashtag is trending on your mastodon instance would you like to approve it and i'm like yes and i've looked for ways to modify automate that yeah still got to deal with it from time to time so yeah uh you know what i'll keep continue using mastodon i'll continue using twitter i'll wouldn't but i mean we we've seen the life and death we've been around long yeah enough to where we've seen like social media sites come and go like whatever i don't know i don't know just give me that g plus thing. Yeah. mpv joe yeah so this is really cool um there's a new version of honestly one of my favorite media players on linux mpv mpv 0 0.35 is out and it includes a pipe wire Pipewire backend support and many optimization improvements. So for those of you that don't know, MPV is an open source and cross-platform video player, which is a fork of mPlayer 2, and it was created in 2012. And one of my favorite features of MPV is, you know, it's it's extremely advanced command line features. That's how I like to use it. <laughs> and uh, it's it's like, you know, it has those features like the original M player, and it has a very easy to use uh, minimal uh, user interface. And it having Pipewire audio backend support available is really wonderful. And it it it. It, then it says it should behave similarly, similarly to uh, TAC AO Jack. Um, so if you, you know, because I've run Jack with it before, so it'll be nice to be able to use a pipe wire with it. A and, pipe wire, that's yeah. the thing for people who watch this, what, for people who yeah. can't figure out how to use Jack? <laughs> yes. Okay. It is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> pipe wire is that Jack overlay. <laughs> So and, I kid. Yeah. Not really. it, the other cool thing about uh, the newest version of MPV is that it has DMA buffering capability, which honestly will result in your battery on your laptop lasting longer because the CPU has less of a workload. And when I was thinking about this uh, new DMA, DMA buffer capability, I was thinking about this also will optimize MPV even better for running faster on older hardware, which I do. I run mPlayer and, and MPV on a lot of my old machines. And uh, yeah, this is this is a really nice fe feature, making MPV uh, play on even older machines. <laughs> it's really nice. <laughs> I use MPV better. all the yeah. time. It is... Uh... Yeah my go-to <laughs> yeah 
It's my right click. I use just the very basic bare bones MPV GTK. Yeah. Sort of. And the main reason I use it is I use it for like this show this afternoon. I'll be using it to make our timestamps. Yeah. Why? Because MPV has the best scrubbing out of every media player on Linux. Mm-hmm. When you're talking about like frame by frame, like yes. speed scrubbing, where I can go through real quick. Like uh, VLC wants to do everything in chunks. Yeah, you chunks know? or MPV, you could do it a frame at a time. It's nice. Right. So I can just hold down right or left and like scroll through and like, oh, now we're talking about that story. Yeah. Let's write down that timestamp and we we'll go to the next one. Really good to see this. Uh, kind of miss, oh, kind of miss. Uh, I don't really kind of miss. I kind of miss the interface for MPlayer though. That thing was snazzy back in the day. I know. I still, hey, I still use MPlayer. Then, in fact, I still compile it for all my machines to get that extra bit of performance, especially out of my old systems. <laughs> I love Mplayer. Oh, <laughs> man. I, it, we used to have such cool, weird interfaces. And you know the yeah, one Yeah, like, all the skins. Yeah, it's like that line with a circle in the middle. And yeah. It like, yeah, it's just weird <laughs> back in the day. But one of the cool things, like, you know, that origin and story of, like, Mplayer. Mplayer was one of the, uh, I think, the first. Yes, it was. Yeah, to, it was um, a Unix port. I mean, you could play it on Unix, too. In fact, I first used it on Unix. To finish yeah. the sentence. Uh, mm -hmm. was one of the first to, it was the first to implement NV decode. Ah, oh, yes. True. Which was a game changer because mm -hmm. we had single core CPUs back in those days that mm -hmm. couldn't play 720p60 video. They yeah. Full tilt, latest AMD Athlon, whatever it was, was struggling with drop frames, trying to play 1080p60. Just forget about 1080p. That was just a moon resolution that you know, crazy people use and, uh, NV encode or NV decode gave us that ability because mm -hmm. you could compile Absolutely. it. And all of a sudden you could watch 1080, you could watch HD. We used to call it, you know, 720p 60 or 720p 30 HD video. Cause it looked amazing on our 15 inch monitors. Yeah, um, we did. And I used to use mencoder, you know, it's, it's like FFM peg, peg, but it's the, Oh, it's the the client that interfaces with uh, MPlayer, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, uh, I used to always do compare and contrast the speeds of FFmpeg with uh, <laughs> Mencoder. That was always fun. <laughs> the uh, MPV is just a really solid like it, it's my kind of project, and I know there's better front ends. If I say better air quotes around it, you know, more featured front ends than just the regular MPV GTK. But that does yeah. everything I want. Like, can you play? Yep, that's all I'm looking for. And I find myself using VLC less and less these days. Yeah. It just yeah. seems like it's a bit heavy. It, it is. But it does it do everything, you know, that, mm -hmm. hey, VLC is still around. Like, that, that, no, because if it doesn't open with VLC, you got the problem. VLC doesn't. Mm -hmm. That's always been my thing. Good news. And I want to see more and more applications support Pipewire natively like this. Yeah. This, is, this, this, this makes me happy. I think it's awesome that it's coming from, you know, the fork of MPlayer, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is supporting Pipewire first. <laughs> you know what? Maybe VLC can learn how to support Jack properly. Yeah. <laughs> Quit renaming my things. Oh, VLC does the most annoying <laughs> thing with Jack where it like disconnects between songs. Yeah, that's right. That's which, right. Which, you know, wouldn't be a bad idea mm -hmm. if you only had two outs on your interface because it's just, you know, reconnect to your two outs and you won't have to worry about it. But, um, I got a lot more than two outputs and it connects to the wrong ones. So I don't mm. know. More pipe wire. <laughs> I look forward to our pipey future. Now, yes. something I want to bring up. This, ladies and gentlemen, is mm. the Canon Vixia. Vixia? I don't know. V I think it's Vixia. Vixia. <laughs> yeah. HF R eight hundred HD. That's right. This this guy has been responsible for filming everything you've ever seen in the studio for any guides or anything, anything that's not the camera mounted on the wall on the other side of the room. I've been using this and it's a great little camcorder. It's old and been around for a long time. Mike actually picked this up from our wish list years and years and years. I was so excited because, you know, I finally got a camera to do like overhead stuff and guides and how to's and stuff like that. It's been around since the beginning and I don't think it's going anywhere. I'm going to have to put it next to like the original fine upstanding cannibal wall or something like that. But, it needed an upgrade. It needed an upgrade. You know, 
something a little sharper because one of the downsides about this being a camcorder is it expects for whatever reason to be outside it requires so much light to get a good image out of it and even that mm -hmm. image is kind of soft because i mean it's getting on in years so i wanted something with interchangeable lenses where i could put a good prime yeah. lens on it and open it up and not have to worry about like crazy lighting and i also wanted to see how low you could go and mm -hmm. still have something that would have clean hdmi out that's what i need for like streaming because i want to do things like hey i want to build a pc so i want to have that plugged into a capture card and an encoder and i was starting this project a little while ago then all of a sudden out of the blue all the camera prices and electronic prices just went completely insane for a couple of years something happened i'm not sure what it was but it seems like the last three or four <laughs> years uh electronic stuff just went mental um fast forward like whatever happened has happened and we're kind of getting back to regular normal times uh normalcy i've revisited this project now i've said for a long time years now um like the go-to if you want like a good dual purpose you know streaming camera that you can do, you know, do recordings with or anything like that you're going to get like a sony a6000 which is a decent piece of kit it's an excellent budget camera but people still want too much for an a6000 and we're talking about cameras from like 2014 here too so uh no eight yeah eight year old camera mm -hmm. i was thinking mm, all right a6000 that's going to be a sony email maybe i can get the sony a5100 i think maybe mm -hmm. that's a good idea and i looked at that and you know they're not bad you can get a sony a5100 for around like 300 bucks these days but what got my attention is when I was looking for the A5100, I ran across the A5000. Like, I didn't even know they made them. They released all these cameras at the same time. These, mm -hmm. The 5000, 5100, 6, all came out the same year. And uh, I saw the 5000s, which is this guy here. This is Sony A5000. Why is this one so much cheaper? Because people were selling these things for like 75 bucks, 100 bucks, 150 bucks. Joe bought one for 150 bucks this week after watching um, what I'm about to talk about. And we're not talking about like 150 bucks for just the body. No, no, no. People are like they're selling these 150 bucks with the lens, with the lens. Nice. and everything else. Like, I mean, it's got the flip out LCD on the back and everything else that you would expect. Yeah. 20 megapixel camera. All of this. And I'm like, well, what's the catch? What's the catch? It's got HDMI out on it. I can plug that in. I can, what is, does it do like 480i or something? I was like, no, it does 1080p60 over HDMI out. I'm like, hmm, why is this so? So I start digging around and I find out why it's so cheap. <laughs> find out why no one, especially why it was so cheap during the pandemic yeah. was when you plug a capture card into it, when you plug it into a capture card, the HDMI has an overlay on the OSD that you can't disable. Yeah. Until <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen. Woohoo! I am not a fan of artificial <laughs> software limitations. So we're just going to take this out. Sony put this on this camera for no other reason than to make sure that you bought the A5100 or the 6000. That's it. That's the only reason this has that forced overlay on it. Show you how to flip a bit in the firmware using telnet over the camera's built-in wi-fi it is the most hacky thing i've done in recent memory i've even included a list to a 90s hacker music spotify playlist for your enjoyment <laughs> but it's going to get rid of the osd and you we're genuinely just going to tell net into this guy log in and we're going to change a zero to a one or a one to a zero however you want to look at it and look at that because we're going to load these cameras all run a version of Android, Sony's version of whatever they got hacked up. Yeah. We're going to site load an APK on it to enable Telnet to get the Wi Fi, <laughs> log into it, and it's done. Look at that. There's Frank. There's the before and after. So it gets rid of everything at the bottom, and you get a nice 1080p60 signal out of your camera. It is, uh, this is just this kind of stuff makes me so happy to do. Mm -hmm. because I was, if you're looking for something, these things are just dirt cheap. And the biggest difference between an A5100 and like an A6000, biggest difference, 300 bucks. That's the biggest difference when you're looking at them. But look at all these things, 185, 190, 225, 
for live streaming. Now, there are advantages to getting an A5100 or an A6000. And again, you know, they have the new S series from Sony, which is like their current gen stuff, which isn't bad at all. But again, this is like, you can get these for like 75 to 100 bucks. It only records 1080i. So if you were buying one to record video on a camera. Yeah, or 4K, no. <laughs> yeah. Or 4K, yeah. Yeah. But if you're looking for a 1080p streaming camera for a streaming setup, even if you just wanted to use Perfect. it like, for a webcam, this thing annihilates any USB webcam on the market. But it's got the interchangeable lenses. Yeah. That's nice where it gets all of the Sony E mount stuff. And Sony's got the nifty 50 if you're doing wide, but if you're doing, um, you know, it's an APS C sensor, crop format sensor, you know, you get like a decent Sigma. Oh, what's that going to math out to a cropped? So if you wanted to do something like, you know, reasonably close, you get like a 24 millimeter prime lens. That should work just fine. Mm. You get a lot of light in there. And a decent piece of glass in front of it. So there you go. Go yeah. out and uh, drive the prices of these up crazy <laughs> high before everyone else does. Oh, that's so nice, Ben. Actually, um, after, as I was going through your tutorial and I watched the video, um, I realized, you know what? I, I need to pick one up for <laughs> under 200 bucks because it's a nice backup. I have the much newer version, the, the Sony Alpha A6400. Mm -hmm. with a 24 megapixel camera and and i've used the 4k video on it but for streaming you don't need the 4k so, <laughs> so exactly. maybe for the Most future of the time, but... <laughs> like when you're streaming yeah like, we're getting 720p you know yeah <laughs> yeah and uh that yeah. that is like the thing about it if i got these things hanging off you know, poles and stuff hanging over things and they get knocked over. I break it. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm going to be cross, but yeah. I'm only going to be like $150 angry. Right. I'm, like, yeah. oh, I'm just going to order and another one. The fact that it comes with the lens for that price, yeah. <laughs> it just blows me away. <laughs> it comes with a, what, what was the kit lens in these things? Uh, 60 mil, yeah, 60 to 50. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, that's a decent enough zoom lens and, you know, they, you can put them in full manual mode, which is one mm -hmm. of the things I like. So I can adjust my F-stop shutter speed and all the other fun ISO settings and get it like dialed into what I needed to do. Very, very happy with it for the price. And also I love when we can take something and be like, you know what, we could make this useful if Sony didn't, you know, we're talking about Sony, the people who created their own memory card format. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Sony. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I can take, I'm, I would be, that, that would be awesome because I could still use my $500 lens that I bought for, yeah, <laughs> for my Sony. Yeah, it's an yeah. email lens and you pop in and you it's pop awesome. out. So that mm -hmm. will be a thing. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we get to talk, we got to continue week three of things that are better than a pie. But if you like everything we do, you can support it. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. These people got access to that video. Like almost two days early because you get the first taste. Like I'm going to put stuff like that out and like, take a look, see if you see any problems, see if you like it. Give me some feedback because I'm doing these videos for you guys and just for the Linux community as a whole. And I want to make sure they're right. And I want to make sure they're high quality, but you also got first crack at all the eBay listings. Now everybody's going to run out and buy these things. And uh, that supports this show we do on Saturday, live streams we do in between and uh, a couple other ways. Head over to linesteamcast.com forward slash nothing. What do I have? I don't, I don't know. I don't have like a dedicated page for, we're really bad at marketing ourselves. Yeah, we just got like the support page. Yeah. So Jill's got a wish list. If you want to help Jill out and cover just nightmare fuel in the background. Give me more plushy pl penguins and some that light up. <laughs> and mugs. Yeah. And mugs. And mugs. Yeah. I always need a new mug to show off during the show. <laughs> I got one for the studio. That'll get you back here on this wall if you're fiscally irresponsible. But I don't have anything that's RG. Let me double check. I got the mother. Nope. See, these are very green, though. Uh, yeah. Do you have anything that's RGB? Does that motherboard have it? Probably not. Nope. It, nope. Yeah. <laughs> I have a $500 <laughs> keyboard on mine. So there you go. Oh, there you go. That'll <laughs> have RGB, of course. No. <laughs> no. But it's got a jog dial. Oh, nice. Yes. <laughs> If I buy, if I spent five hundred dollars on a keyboard and it had RGB, I would be oh, <laughs> I'd be so angry. I'd be so angry. Ben doesn't like unicorn vomit. 
I, no, I don't. But he has it on be- in his background. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> That's uh. He got red. <laughs> RGB. <laughs> Shall I have like the tracks in um, Reaper set to RGB? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not even joking. On. You can't even see. You can kind of see them over here. That's like red, <laughs> green, and blue. See, that's the difference, Jill. You play around yeah. with your lighting. I don't. Yes, I do. I just turned on my pink one. <laughs> I mean, what? You want to play this game? I mean, <laughs> there. No, I'm pink. Yay! Good, Ben. This is cool. <laughs> It's great for audio listeners. They're very yes. happy that we're doing this. <laughs> They're um, like, what's going on? <laughs> Having fun with playing RG- with RGB. <laughs> tell everyone about the ra- ra- Ragsda. Uh, Raxa. <laughs> ra- ra- R-A-D-X-A. R- yeah. So uh, there is a new rock chip RX 3588 chipset single board computer out called the Rock 5. It, it actually claims to be the first SBC to support 8K at 60. Wow, that's that's honestly uh, quite incredible for a, a little baby computer. <laughs> and, and this uh, board has a quad-core 2.4 gigahertz Cortex A76 unit, which provides processing, the processing power. And it also has four Cortex 1.8 gigahertz A55 cores for efficiency and background tasks and multitasking. And so it has eight ARM cores versus the Raspberry Pi's four cores. Pretty sweet. <laughs> and it's got an ARM Molly. Uh, G610 MC4 GPU. It comes in 4 gig, 8 gig, or 16 gig, 64 bit uh, RAM variants. And it also has dual HDMI ports, which support displays up to 8K um, 60 frames per second resolution, uh, 60 refresh, and 4K 60 refresh. And it also has a micro HDMI input port supporting up to 4K. Uh, 60 and a USB C port and two USB 2 ports. It's got every port you'd ever want on this thing. It's it's loaded. <laughs> it's pretty um, pretty impressed, Ben, with the specs of this board. <laughs> it's uh, it, technology kept on trucking, and we, we understand, you know, I'll bring this up each and every week. Uh, at the Raspberry Pi Foundation has had like supply chain issues for coming up on two plus years. Yeah. Technology has kept on trucking, you know, and you see things like I, that's what I was looking at. 16 gig board. Yeah. For $219, which Amazing. isn't bad. Four gig. Is that 144? 144. 169. Yeah. And this one's not as incredible a deal as the one last week, I would say. It's definitely yeah. got some more oomph to it. Yeah. But still, $169. Is cheaper than can't buy one period. Mm-hmm. And it's going to ship within 14 days. Right. It's available. <laughs> Do you think you'd be able to get a Raspberry Pi 4 in 14 days? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Wait, Not okay. at a reasonable hey, price. Oh, okay, for under 200 bucks. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because yeah, like, I'm sure there's a kit on Amazon right now that'll be like, this is a Raspberry Pi 4 kit. What comes with it? A box and a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> it's a kit. 208 bucks. <sighs> so... It's going to be interesting. I think we're going to see um, we got a rock chip based future because all is yeah. rock chip. They seem to be able to crank these things out. And, you know, these are eight core big mm-hmm. levels. But again, 16 gigs on an SBC, 32 gigs was available last week. Yeah, 32. <laughs> I wouldn't even know what to do yeah. with 32 gigs. Yeah. Like, this, this is silly. Um, and then this ne- ne- next version of this one will have probably 32 gigs. So. <laughs> That's strange. It's strange. Uh, I will eventually uh, buy. See, I was going to buy that little X86 one, but now I'm going to be building um, Jordan Mark II, the big box for uh, Mm -hmm. your PC that you and Jordan are on. So that's going to be put on hold. But eventually we'll get down, we'll we'll get the uh, finances and everything together and pick up like one of those of them. Because Jordan got the one from 
last week he got the one with the three ethernet ports yeah the, the uh, one from two weeks ago yeah mm. it didn't come with the power supply about. though so he's like ah oh yeah yeah right? yeah it was an extra twenty dollars i think for the power supply no, that was it i don't No, i think yeah. he, he bought the twenty dollar case though oh oh okay he did buy the 20. That was the first thing I asked him. I was like, did you give him 20 bucks for that case? And he's like, yeah. Like, all, right, all right, fine. I don't blame you. Might as well, you know, if you're getting that. Because that's such a great deal for the board itself. Um, just crazy times. Crazy times. Look forward to playing around and all that. But we're at 40 minutes, so we got to bounce out of here, Joe. Yes. <laughs> Been running a little long. Yeah. We're going to roll some credits. Thanks for showing up, listening to us, watching us live, <laughs> however you consume our nonsense. But we will see you next week. Until then, let's have some credits. Aw, we love you all. And thank you, Techno Druid, for the follow, as well as the Quirky Turtle for the follow. Thank you very much. And we got our advisors, Omegas and Artharin. Artharin's in the house right now in chat. Our executive producers, Barbrant, Scott M, Atomic, Mike, Empty. <laughs> our Chicago people from Patreon, Abstraction. <laughs> our sea monsters. <laughs> too many for them. Too many of them for me to uh, Come on, name man. It's, and like, read. it's like a Trek Media map. You, you just yeah. get better every week. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that one I just can't read. I need to take a screenshot so I can read <laughs> all our wonderful patrons. <laughs> <laughs> you know what man? <laughs> let's confuse people with the thumbnail <laughs> we're both so pink <laughs> yes 